Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the Creed 2 titles in After Effects. Sort of. So just as a heads up, I think the Creed 2 titles were created in Cinema 4D. Like 99% sure. Uh, the texture on them looks amazing. It's got real, real boxing feel to it. Personally, I don't have Cinema 4D and I don't know how to use it. So I decided to give it a go in After Effects here. And here's kind of the examples side by side of what I created next to the Creed 2 titles. So that's kind of what I'm going for. So one of the tough things about using After Effects is it's not really designed to do texture on 3D objects. Um, there are workarounds. I'm going to show you one of them. Uh, it's not ideal. It's not the best way to do it, but it is one way to kind of it, it is one way to do it. So first I needed some texture and I think the Creed 2 titles, it's either, either like the boxing canvas or uh, like boxing tape or athletic tape. So I've got some athletic tape here that I used and I just wanted to take some photographs and get different, uh, tech, different uh, looks of texture. And what I did was, I just have a baseball bat here and I wrapped it around, I wrapped the tape around the baseball bat and it might be hard to see but I just kind of made it, tried to make it like uneven. Uh, that way it would uh, create more contrast and would uh, pop out more on the text. And here's some examples of what the photos look like. So I just have four different samples, but you know, it's always good. If you can take more, great, you have more options. All right, so I'll show you how I made this. So I'm just gonna create a new comp and I'm gonna call this one uh, you know, I'm just going to call it goat 1920 by 1080. Uh, I'm just going to make it, I'm going to make it 15 seconds. Okay. So the first thing you can do is create a new solid. I like to use the shortcut command Y or probably control Y on windows. Hit okay. So an effect you're gonna to need to use is called shatter. You can drag and drop that on your solid. Now, I, what I understand is, I think I've never actually really used this effect at all, but I think it's, you can use it to make stuff look like it's smashed apart. Um, but we're not gonna do that with the letters. We're gonna do something else. But the thing you have to do is, I'm just going to show you here, you need to, you can see this ball in the middle and this ball is, it's actually one of the force uh, properties and it's, it's the thing that's breaking your, your object. Um, I don't want it to break anything in this case. So I'm, I have to actually back this ball away from that, that wall. I believe if I change the depth, I can get it away from that wall. So if you go into force one depth and change it to 2.5, you should be safe. All right, so I'm just gonna change the camera back, Y rotation back to zero. Okay. And then now I need to create my first letter. And in this case, I'm gonna create the letter G. I'm just gonna change the size. Let's go say 400 Let's align it to the middle. I'm going to reset the anchor point to the middle there. Okay. So I have my first letter. Now you could do this where you spell out the whole word and then apply, um, the shatter effect to your letters. I like to do it individually. That way I can control each letter individually, but you can also just type out, you know, the whole word that you want to use. But in this case, I'm just going to do one letter at a time. So I'll go back into the shatter on my red solid here and I want to change not texture shape. So right now the shape pattern is set to bricks and I want to change it to custom. So once I select custom, I can choose this tab here and select G. Actually, I'm just going to change this to rendered. All right, and actually one thing I need to do, I have my textures here. I need to bring my textures in. So I'm just gonna drag and drop those above the G and they'll show up there. Actually, I'm just gonna bring them down a bit in size, scale. 
Okay, but I'll go back into the shatter effect on the red solid one layer. And under texture, now what I can do is for the front mode, I can apply, oh, I gotta turn these off, sorry. So what I need to do, I had to actually turn off the letter G and all the texture layers. And then when I apply a texture, you'll see it showing up on the letter there. So I can choose between my different textures. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna adjust this a bit. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Turn it off again. I believe I can move this around to find a certain part of the texture I want to use. And I like that line going down the back side of the G there. Another thing you can do is uh, increase the extrusion here. So that way you can kind of start to see if I change the camera position, you can see it's actually there's a you know depth to it. And right now it's red. What I could do, I could go back into my solid here, change it to a white there. So it kind of matches a bit. Or if you want, you can apply textures to different sides. So if I want a texture on the side layer, I could do that as well. It doesn't really show up that nicely, but it is an option. So I'm just going to reset the camera position here. And now I'm just going to select both the white solid and the G and I'm just going to try and reposition them to the middle somewhere. You don't have to get it exact, but just try and get it close. It's just a nice, nice to work with when you, when you can do that. Uh, the next thing I like to do is apply a light. So I'm going to use a spotlight and with boxing, you always think about that overhead light that's shining down on the ring, right? So that's kind of the effect we're trying to, create with uh, these titles. So I'm just going to select a standard spotlight. And we actually need to change this, this white solid to a 3D layer. So if you just click on the cube here, and then I can move my light around. And what I like to do is have uh, two views so I can see front on and over top in this case. And I'm just going to move my light around just so it's like shining down on that G. All right. So let's grab the Z handle here and bring it in closer. Then I'm going to make it shine. Nope, wrong way. Shine down on that G. I'm going to grab Y and bring it up. And then point it down like that. Let me just move around. You can play with it. Like there's no exact way. You just kind of want to get in the area and fine tune it to your liking. And actually, I think what I did before was uh, I really backed it off. I backed this whoop, too far, too far. I backed this light off and I went into the light options here and I increased the intensity. I think I changed the cone angle just so it really shines on that. And I just kind of played around with it. I just want the bottom of the G to show up more. You, you could always create another light that sort of shines from below, um, filling in that darkness on the bottom of the G if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna keep stick with the one light. No, undo that. If I angle this down just a bit more, bring it in there. I'm starting to like, I'm starting to like the looks of that. So just for time, I'm gonna move on, but you can play around with the light to get it to your liking. So now we need to create the other letters. And what I'm gonna do here is turn all of these into a pre-comp. And I can select, I can do that by selecting them all, hitting Shift Command C on a Mac, probably Shift Control C on Windows, and create a pre-comp. 
So I'm just going to call it PC for pre-comp letter G. There we go. So we have one letter. Now I need to duplicate this. And the best way to do that is to go into your project panel here and just hit Command D on a Mac or Control V on Windows. Select the comp you want, hit the Command D. It'll duplicate. And then you just want to make sure that you rename it. So I'm going to rename this one O. I'm going to open it up. And sorry, I'm just going to close down all these old comps that I don't need now. There we go. All right, and then I can, I'm just gonna create another letter. And we'll go O, close it down, and then I'll go back into the white solid, and I just need to change my shape from the G to the O, and it'll update for me. So now I got a G and O. So you gotta do this uh, for all your, your letters if you're doing it individually. Um, so I'm just going to fast forward through this, but I have to do this for the O and the, or for the A and the T as well. So now I have all my letters, G O A T. Now I got to bring them all into one cop, cop, comp, comp. Um, and I can do that. If I go back to the original G here and I'm just going to drag O in. I'm going to drag A in. And I'm gonna drag T in. All right, and then just reposition them somewhere in the middle there. So ideally it's in the middle. I'm gonna create a background now. So Command Y or Control Y, I can create a solid. I'm gonna drag that to the bottom there. And then I'm gonna apply a gradient ramp to it. Uh, and for the Creed titles, it had that nice dark blue to it. So I'm going to really bring that down. Um, maybe let's try that there. No, that does not look right. Let's go nice and dark. And this one, we might as well just go like black. Something like that. And actually, you know what? I'm going to switch it to a radial. Yeah radial and then you can always grab these little guys here and just reposition stuff and just play around with it to get kind of that moody look that you're going for um, bring up this color just a bit more something like that maybe desaturate the color All right. And you know what, I'm gonna pre-comp this, all the letters, so they're all combined together. And that way I can just move them as one uh, layer. All right, so the final thing I'm gonna do is add some lights just to create a little bit more mood. Um, one thing you need to do is, so I have two views set up here so I can see top on the left and front facing on the right. And you can see that my text layer is separated from my background layer. And uh, that just, that way when I apply a light, it won't um, shine on both layers. So I can have lights that uh, are shining on the background and lights that shine on the text separately. So I just need to create some lights here. So I'll go to layer, new light, and I'll just do a standard spotlight. And now I just need to position it. So I'm just gonna drag it so it gets closer. I'm gonna move it up. And you can see right now it's actually gone behind the, the text. And I'm gonna make it point down. Yeah, there we go. Uh, no, I don't. I don't want that. I want to bring it closer there. Make sure that's hitting that background. That's starting to look the way I want it. There we go. It's shining down. Uh, maybe I can move it. Where's the background a bit more? 
and then I could go into the properties here, light options. I could increase that. I can increase the fall off distance. I can just play around with this stuff. Uh, cone angle, maybe make it a little shallower. Crank, keep cranking up that intensity a bit more. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's kind of like that, I don't know, that's that boxing ring light that's shining down from the, the ceiling. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. You can keep playing around. Keep playing around with it yourself to get the light that you like. The light that you like? Yeah, that sounds weird. And then I'm just gonna duplicate it. Move one over so it looks like there's multiple lights shining down. Actually, I'll duplicate it from that middle light there. There we go, so it looks like we got three lights. Um, if you don't want the lights, if you don't want to, have to create more lights for your text layer, you could always do this uh, continuously rasterize, and that will bring back the lights that are on your pre-comp, like these ones here, this light. But an easy thing I could do is I could, I could duplicate these lights. I should really rename them. Uh, BG, spotlight, I'm going to say middle, and then I could do it for the other ones there. Uh, what's this one right? Copy, uh, left. All right. So I could duplicate these, and then if I have this one selected, I'll just select those new lights. I can bring them forward so that they are over top, and I'll just turn off that continuously rasterize, and you can see they're they're shining on the text layer now. Now I could just reposition those. Uh, I'll bring them down. There we go. Starting to like that. That's got kind of that moody feel, right? Like uh, before the the boxing match is about to start. I'm just gonna turn off, turn it to one view, and zoom in a bit more there. Let's see where my. I mean, it's a little dark. I could bring it up. I could. I mean, I could create an adjustment layer and bring up the exposure, or I could adjust the intensity on these a bit more and just really starting to come out there. There we go, that's starting to look better. I'm liking that. So there you go, that's kind of my way of creating titles that look like the Creed 2 text. You know, the Creed 2 text looks way better. I'm pretty sure it was created in Cinema 4D, um, which is better suited for 3D objects and texture mapping. After Effects isn't really built for that so much, but I don't have Cinema 4D. I don't have the skills to use Cinema 4D, but I know how to use After Effects. So this is my method of how, uh, trying to create the Creed 2 titles in After Effects. So hopefully this helps you out and you might be able to apply it to some, some of your own projects in the future.